We are coming to the end of Unit 7, and we're going to revisit the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse now that we're a little bit more comfortable with square roots. So let's get down the definition of the Pythagorean Theorem. So here's our definition of the Pythagorean Theorem. If you add the squares of the lengths of the two small sides of a right triangle, so the, if you have a right triangle and you, your two smaller sides, you square those sides, add them together, they equal the square of the longest side, which we also call the hypotenuse. And we'll have a visual of this in a second, but the formula you use is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I normally like a to be the smallest side and b to be the second smallest side, but technically they can be switched, it really doesn't matter. The important thing is that c is always your hypotenuse. So we've done some work with the Pythagorean Theorem, and we know that this is a really good, useful formula if we have one of the missing sides. So maybe I'm missing A, and I can plug in B and C and solve for A. Or maybe I'm missing the hypotenuse, but I have A and B, and then I can use that to solve for C. Now your standards say that you also have to understand and explain essentially how this works. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this might look familiar, we've gone over this before. Essentially what it's saying is we have this right triangle and this side length is four, so we can see four blocks. This side length is three and then this side length, the hypotenuse, is five. Now the formula says essentially this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we took our 4 in square, we get 16, and our 3 in square, we get 9, and our 5 in square equals 25, and these are going to be equal to each other. So that's how it is from the formula. But essentially, the way to prove why this works is to draw boxes off each of the side lengths. So if this side length is 4, and then we draw a box off of it, well, of course, it should be 4 by 4. Well, if we remember area, area should be that length squared because that, it's a perfect square. So the area of this box, the area of box A, should be 16. Same thing for B, if we took our 3 and square it, which is 9, we're going to get the area for the box of B. And if we take the side length of C and square it, we should get the area for this big box C. Now, the point of this is the fact that the area of A and the area of B, if we combine them all together, equals the area of C. So that's why a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And here's another video to show you the visual of the fact that, that some two smaller boxes do equal the bigger box. So let's say on the test you're asked to explain the Pythagorean theorem, or essentially to show the proof of the Pythagorean theorem. I would definitely start by drawing this picture, and then you could explain about the fact that the area of A plus the area of B equals the area of C, and that's why it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just a basic explanation of this. So any sort of notes you want to write down for yourself um, to remember that, so essentially all you need to do is copy that because this will be on the test. That's there for you. So now we're actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to look at two different triangles. Um, both with missing sides and just see how we use that formula to find that missing side. So we're going to start with this one right here where the hypotenuse is missing. C is essentially missing. Now they've already distinguished which one's A, B, and C, but if they hadn't done that, maybe they just said 3, 4, and then this is a question mark, it's up to us to decide which is which. Now once again, the hypotenuse is always C, but it doesn't matter which of these is A or B. Personally, I like making the shorter side A, but it really doesn't matter. This could be A, or this could be B, and this could be A, or this could be B. The only thing that matters is that C is the hypotenuse. So the way I like starting solving for this unknown is, of course, writing down the formula we're going to use. So this just tells us that this is what we're starting with. So now we can at least throw in the numbers that we do know. We do know that we have a 3 for A and a 4 for B. So let's go ahead and put in those numbers. So now we've put in the 3 for A and the 4 for B. So now this is just like any sort of linear equation where we're trying to solve for the unknown. So PEMDAS says that we would do parentheses first, but we have no parentheses. So next are exponents. So we can actually um, evaluate out this 3 squared to become 9 and this 4 squared to become 16. So we're closer. 
Now what I'm going to want to do is combine the 9 and the 16 to get 25. So we're almost there. We know that we want c alone, but we don't have regular c. We have c squared. So if I want c, but I have c squared, I'm going to want to square root that to just get regular c. But remember, we can't just do one side. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So we're going to need to square root that 25. So I square rooted both sides, and the square root of 25 is 5. So that tells me that this missing side length, the hypotenuse of this triangle, is 5. And we always want to kind of check to see if that would make sense. So let's see, we have a triangle, one side's 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. So our missing side length was 5, and that's it. So now let's look at how we do it if we have one of the missing smaller sides. So in this triangle, we have A as one of the sides, 8 and 10. Now, we're going to want to decide which side is which. The 10 has to be C, of course. And then we can decide which of these side lengths is A and which one's B. They've kind of already made that decision for us by calling one the side length A. So I guess we can just follow that and call 8 B. So we have an A, we have a B, and we have a C. So now let's write down the formula so that we know what it is we're even working with. All right, so we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared is our formula. Next thing we can do is just put in the numbers that we have. So we're going to put in our 10 for c and our 8 for b and leaving a alone because we don't have anything we can put in for it. So now we have a squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. And now we're just solving it like it's any unknown. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually to square these numbers. So 8 squared we're going to turn into 16, and 10 squared we're going to turn into 100. So we've turned 8 squared into 64, we've turned 10 squared into 100. So now hopefully you're seeing that, oh, I'm going to want to get rid of adding or subtracting. So that's how we would solve this if this is just a regular linear equation. So I have this plus 16. So if I want to undo adding 16, I'm going to need to subtract 16 from both sides to keep things even. So we got a squared still. The, six, the plus 64 minus 64 canceled out. And 100 minus 64 is 36. And some of you can already see what the answer is going to be. So we have a squared, but we want regular a. So we're going to need to square root that to get regular a. And if we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. So we're going to square root that both sides, so we're gonna, our answer is essentially going to be the square root of 36. So we know our answer is the square root of 36, which we know is 6. However, if this is something that's going to be a nasty decimal, you're welcome to leave it as the square root or find out what that actual decimal is. The point is to show that you understand the process to find that unknown. Here we got that that side is 6, that missing side is 6. And does that make sense in our triangle? Well. So at 6, 8, 10, yeah, that seems to be about right. So our answer was 6. So the main problem that I see people get with these sort of problems is mixing up these two different ways. So you kind of have a different method if you're solving for the hypotenuse than if you're solving for one of the sides. So you need to be really careful about putting each number in its proper place and then solving for that unknown with the proper techniques. Don't do shortcuts because you're going to mix yourself up. Okay. So now let's take a look at doing a similar problem, but one where they don't give us a picture to work from, just a word problem essentially. So here it says, a right triangle has the side lengths of 5 and 7. What is the length of the hypotenuse? So they don't give us a picture, but we're doing pretty much the same thing. I like starting by drawing a picture just so I can mentally prepare myself to think this is exactly what I'm doing. So let's start by drawing a right triangle. It doesn't need to be a fancy right triangle, just any right triangle will do. So if yours looks different than mine, that's totally okay. So now let's label the sides. We know that two of the side lengths are 5 and 7, but the hypotenuse is hi unknown. So obviously with the way I drew my triangle, I'll probably want to put 5 over here and 7 down here. But technically we could switch those up because it really doesn't matter. So let's label those sides. So I've labeled the sides 5, 7, and then I put C on this because I already know that's my unknown and the hypotenuse is always C. You could call it X or something else like that, but to just stick with our formula, I like to call it C. So now let's just dive in and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that. So we of course start by just writing down our formula. Then we can take these numbers and plug them in. So one thing that we need to decide right now is which side length is which. 
So is this going to be A or is this going to be A? You need to make that decision and then hold to it as you plug those in. Once again, I like making the smaller side A, but it really doesn't matter. So I have decided to make 5A and 7B, but they can be switched. So I'm going to want you to finish up this one. Go ahead and take those numbers, plug them in where they go. So 5 and 7 should go over here, and you square them, and then you've, you're going to have to add them together and square root them to find what C is. So go ahead and finish that one up. So what the Pythagorean theorem was is it essentially says if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared should work. What the converse says is if a squared plus b squared equals c squared works, then it's a right triangle. So essentially, it, the converse means that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to prove that a triangle is a right triangle. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to prove that a triangle is a right triangle. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared works, it is a right triangle. So we're going to apply that right now. So we're going to see if two different triangles are right triangles or not by seeing if the Pythagorean theorem works with their side lengths. So the first one says a triangle has the side lengths of 5, 9, 13. Is it a right triangle? So we just need to throw those numbers into the Pythagorean theorem and see if it works out. So let's start by writing down the Pythagorean theorem. Next, we're going to need to put those numbers in. So obviously 13 is going to be our hypotenuse because it's the longest side. 5 and 9 can be either A or B. Once again, I always like making A the smaller side, so I will put in 5 for A, but it really doesn't matter. So this will be our A, B, and C. So now that we've decided which sides are which, we can just put those numbers into our formula. So putting those numbers in, we get 5 squared plus 9 squared equals 13 squared. So now we're just going to see if that really is true, if 5 squared plus 9 squared equals 13 squared. If it is true, then this is a right triangle. If it's not true, it's not a right triangle. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and square all these numbers. So 5 squared is 25, 9 squared is 81, and 13 squared is 160, and 13 squared is 169. So we squared those, so now we just need to see if this is really true. Does 25 plus 81 equal 169? If you can't do that off the top of your head, use your calculator. So 25 plus 81 is 106. That's not 169, so this doesn't work. So we got something that's not true. So that me this means that this triangle, a triangle with the measurements of 5, 9, and 13, is not a right triangle. It could still be a triangle, but it's not a right triangle. So the, our previous one was not a right triangle. Let's try now with the side lengths of 1, 1, and square root of 2, because side lengths can be square roots. So we're going to start with the same thing. We need to decide which is A, B, and C. Now, it may not be something that you know off the top of your head, but the square root of 2 is the longest of those three. It is longer than 1. So this, of course, is going to need to be C. And obviously, 1 and 1, it doesn't really matter which one's A and B because they're the same. So let's go ahead and decide that A, B, C. Just keep it easy. So we know that this is going to be our A, this is going to be our B, and this is going to be our C. So now let's write down the formula that we're going to use. So we know our A, B, and C. We have our formula. So now we can just take those numbers and plug it into our formula. So we got that 1 squared plus 1 squared equals the square root of 2 squared. So now we just need to see if this really is true or not. So we're going to need to square those numbers. Well, 1 squared is just 1. 1 squared is going to be 1 also. If we square the square root of 2, those two operations cancel each other out. So this is just going to be 2. So let's write those down. So we've squared our numbers, and now we need to see if this is true. Does 1 plus 1 equal 2? Well, I hope that we don't even need our calculators to figure out that, yeah, 1 plus 1 does equal 2. So because we got something that's true, and that means that this, our Pythagorean theorem, does work with this triangle and that this is a right triangle. So now you have examples of ones that are not right triangles and are right triangles. And that's actually going to be it for this lesson.